I'm back at it again, evaluating dry yeast. This time, I brewed a Belgian blonde so I could evaluate Lallemand Abbey yeast versus Fermentus WB06. If you're interested in brewing a Belgian blonde, curious to how these yeasts compare, or you just want to hang out with me while I brew the beer and then evaluate it, well, please stick around and let's get brewing. Well, thanks a lot for dropping by. My name is Brent from Cascades Homebrew. My passion is homebrewing. I've been doing it for 25 years. The focus in this channel is brewing great beer using modest equipment following simple processes. If you're interested in that or want to just learn more about homebrewing, make sure you click that subscribe button so you can find your way back to my channel. So one of my goals for 2021 was evaluating different dry yeasts. When I started homebrewing, both the quality and variety of dry yeast was not nearly what it is today. Dry yeasts have a lot of convenience. They're usually cheaper, they store well, and they're easy to use. Really about the only downside I see with dry yeast is that there is a limited variety compared to liquid yeast. But there are new dry yeasts being introduced every year. So yeast character in a Belgian beer is a critical component. That means the yeast itself is a critical ingredient. Lallemand Abbey looks like a great strain. Information I find say it's pretty close to the Chimay strain, which makes a pretty good beer. Fermentus WB06 is a little bit of an odd one. The label says it's more for Belgian and German wit and Weizen beers, but information I could find on WB06 seemed to say it was more of just a Trappist Belgian yeast than it was necessarily a Weizen beer yeast. So I was curious how these yeasts would do, or if they could potentially compete with WLP 530 for my favorite Trappist style yeast. So what's your favorite yeast for making Trappist style beers? Do you use dry yeast or do you use liquid yeast for those styles? So let me know down in the comments section. Well, all right, well, let's get into the recipe and a little bit of the brew day, and then I'm gonna drink some beer. I'm on my back patio today. The weather is great. The plantings that I did last fall have grown nicely. I really enjoy spending time out here. Well, when it's not raining and mosquitoes are not swarming. Well, today I'm brewing a Belgian Blonde style 25A a moderate strength golden ale that has a subtle, fruity, spicy Belgian yeast complexity, slightly malty, sweet flavor, and a dry finish. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. I brewed this beer on September 6th and then kegged it almost four weeks later on October 2nd. Beersmith tells me my IBUs were 21 and my SRM was 4.7. I calculate my recipes around a 73% overall efficiency. That would give me original gravity of 1065, a final gravity of 1010, an ABV of 7.2% with an 84% attenuation. Though since I split this batch with two different yeasts, I'll cover the actual values a little bit later. My target water profile is up on the screen. I'm really just adding a little bit of gypsum to boost up the sulfate and a little bit of calcium as well. For this batch, I need to start with 7.8 gallons or 29 and a half liters of tap water heated up to 156 degrees Fahrenheit, about 69 degrees Celsius. I add 3.1 grams of gypsum, 31.2 milliliters of phosphoric acid, the target a pH of about 5.4. I always add a half of a Camden tablet just to remove chlorine and chloramine that's in my tap water. With the strike water heated up, I put my brew in the bag bag in place. And then it's time to add in the grain. This one is getting 81.6% of avant-garde German Pilsner, 4.1% of Dingemann's aromatic malt, 4.1% of a wheat malt from proximity. And then in the boil, I was also gonna get 5.2% of cane sugar. So just a standard kind of grocery store type sugar. I let this mash for 60 minutes. Note that I normally wrap up my kettle in a sleeping bag during the mash. This time I did not bother with a sleeping bag. The mash started at 152 degrees Fahrenheit or 67 degrees Celsius, and then it dropped to 146 degrees Fahrenheit or 63 degrees Celsius over the 60 minutes without insulation. It was a pretty warm day. With the mash done, I pulled out the grain bag to drain. As I get closer to boil, I verify that I'm on target with my volume. Looks good. I'm just about at my target of seven gallons. Most of my standard batches with a 60 minute boil target seven gallons of near boiling temperature wort. I reduced that down to six gallons during the boil and between some trub loss and coolage shrinkage, I target 5.5 gallons into the fermenter. At the start of the 60 minute boil, I add my only hop addition. I add one ounce or 28 grams of Herzbrucker hops. I add half an ounce of Northern Brewer. 
I decided to use the Northern Brewer because the Herzberg I had was only 2.2% alpha acid, so I felt like I'd have to add a lot, where the Northern Brewer was 8.6% alpha acid. With 10 minutes left to go in the boil, I add my additions, one and a quarter pounds, or 570 grams of cane sugar, half a tablet of Werflock, 2.2 grams of yeast nutrient. One thing I learned after filming a few videos is that it can be a challenge to talk and capture brew day footage at the same time, especially when the area grounds crew show up to work. It often seems that the people that labor the most at work don't get labor day off as a holiday. Hmm. I chill this batch down as much as I can with my immersion chiller. This time of year is about the peak temperatures for my tap water, so I'll use my fermentation chamber to chill down to pitching temps. Since I plan to ferment this one with two yeasts, I transfer the wort into two fermenters. If you've watched some of my other videos in 2021, you might recall part of my focus for this year has been evaluating various dry yeasts. For this one, I picked two Belgianish dry yeasts. The first one is Lallemand Abbey Ale. Based on feedback I've read, this seems like a good choice for Trappist-style Belgian beers. The other one is Fermentus WB06. Based on feedback I have read and genetic testing that has been done, there seems to be discrepancies between how Fermentus describes some of their yeasts and what they actually are. WB06 is labeled as a wit beer yeast, but it might actually be more similar to other Trappist yeasts. Hopefully this investigative batch will give me some more insight. I direct pitch one pack of each dry yeast into each fermenter. First, the Lallemand Abbey Ale yeast goes in, then the Fermentus WB06. And a few minutes later, I was treated to the mesmerizing sight of a flurry of cascading yeast. Ah, uh, one of the joys of homebrewing you probably won't find discussed in a book. Oh, I almost forgot. So I brewed this beer on the morning of Labor Day holiday, so it was a Monday. I had plans later in the day, and the wort was not going to get down to pitching temperatures before I needed to head out. So I pitched the yeast the following morning. I pitched an entire pack of yeast into each of these batches, so that probably helped get them off to a quick start. At just 10 hours after pitch, the WB06 batch had a nice croisin, and the Abbey batch was showing strong signs of ramping up fermentation. By the following morning, at 24 hours after yeast pitch, both batches had a solid croisin going. I pulled both fermenters out of the chamber for a better look. Both batches are churning away pretty good right now. The color differences stuck with these batches, with the WB06 batch keeping more of this lighter, yeasty appearance. This is my first time using both of these yeasts, so I came up with a fermentation schedule that I thought would work well for a Belgian blonde. I pitched the yeast at 66 degrees Fahrenheit, or 19 degrees Celsius. For three days, I held it at that temperature. Then I rose the temperature up to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, or 22 degrees Celsius, over a four-day period with a couple different increments. I held it at that temperature until it was ready for packaging. I ended up kegging this one on day 26. I normally don't let beers go that long in the fermenter, so it was a little bit of a combination of my schedule, getting time to keg it, also, as you might be able to see here at 14 days, the Abbey Ale batch looked done with just some yeast rafts floating on top. The WB06 batch had small bubbles on top. The gravity of both looked decent at this point, but I figured a bit more time would be fine. When I got around to kegging these beers, the Abbey Ale batch had dropped crystal clear, while the WB06 batch was still a bit cloudy. This batch started with an original gravity of 1064. The Lallemand Abbey Ale yeast dropped to a final gravity of 1010, which gave it an ABV of 7.2% at 84% attenuation. The Fermentus WB06 batch started the same original gravity of 1064, but dropped lower down to 1003, giving an ABV of 8.1% with an 85% attenuation. While I wait for the beers to carbonate to be ready for an evaluation, it'd be good time for you to go ahead and click that subscribe button to be sure you can find your way back to my channel, and click that like button if you enjoy these types of investigative batches. Have you had luck using dry yeast for fermenting Belgian beers? Leave a comment and let me know your results. 
WLP530, the West Mall strain, has been my favorite for the past few years, so I hope one of these dry yeasts can compete with that. All right, time to give these beers a try. So if we look at them appearance-wise, they're very similar. Although the uh, WB061 looks a little hazier after, I think there's a lot of condensation on the glass, but they're both very similar. I cheated here with this one. One thing I've noted in my video, sometimes the tasting can drag on a little bit. So I went ahead and evaluated these, put down some notes, and we're gonna try to run through these and give you my feedback on how they turned out. We'll start with the WB06 batch. So again, color on this, it's got a nice medium golden color, just a slight a bit of a haze to it. Uh, both versions look pretty similar, like I mentioned. The WB06 one was very much, had a lot more haze when it was in the fermenter. It seems like it's kind of evened out a little bit, even though I think the, the Abbey one is a little more clear right now, but they're both pretty similar. If we look at aroma, again, we're looking at the WB06. So it's dom dominated by this yeast-driven kind of tarty, tart apple, uh, maybe a bubble gum. I get, when it, was, when it warms up, I get more of that bubble gum flavor. So it's not, not inappropriate for these type of yeasts and, and some Belgian beers even though it may not be exactly what I like. So I'm not getting a lot in the way of, of malt character, hop character, and the aroma. That the aroma from the, the yeast really kind of dominates. So we go in for a taste and the flavor. So I do get a little bit of the hop character, a little bit of the grain and the flavor, you know, that I, don't, I didn't get in the aroma. I get a subtle, subtle grain sweet, sweetness to it. You know, this beer finished very dry, but it's still got got a lot of character and sweetness. I don't want to, I don't want to say it's, it's not overly sweet or cloying. It's just a little bit of that kind of Pilsner malt sweetness. Again, so the, the same sort of apple notes and bubble gum that were on the aroma. You know, I get those as well in the flavor, although it's more dominant in the aroma. So the body on this one is kind of medium light. You know, it's finished very dry, but it's not like a very um, dry beer. It's very drinkable. So I'm not, and I don't want to you know, pretend to th think it's, you know, thick and sweet. It's definitely not that. It's very nice drinkable. And I think it's very on track for, for what the style should be. Right now, the carbonation seems a little low, I think, but that's a little bit of flaw with my kegging system in that I have to run all my kegs at the same pressure and I really don't have lines to dispense high carbonated beers. So I have to run everything at kind of a medium, about a 2.6 volume. Uh, overall impressions of the beer, you know, it, it's, a, it's a quite nice beer. I think if you enjoyed the flavor from the yeast, you would like this beer. I don't particularly like the apple-y banana gum flavors that I'm getting from it. It'd be kind of interesting to see, you know, maybe how it ages or maybe at a different fermentation temperature, what the character would be. So now if we move on to the uh, Lalamon Abbey Ale one. This one looked beautiful when it was in the fermenter and I put it in the, into the keg. It still is a really nice, it's got a little bit of a haze. There's a lot of condensation on the glass. So it's a little hard to see the true clarity of the beer. So I run through my notes. Again, medium golden color, same color as the other one. It's fairly clear. It's definitely not crystal clear yet, even without the condensation. White head. I'm not getting a lot of, you know, both of these are, are fairly creamy heads, but they, they, don't, they don't last. They do leave a good, you know, stick to the glass. I guess I like to think that wheat malt adds a little bit of that, but whether it does or not, I don't know. Again, not quite as, a little less hazy than the WB06. Um, the aroma. This is where these beers really start to uh, differentiate themselves. So I, I get the I get some sort of Belgian yeast character. I'm not I'm not quite sure what terms to describe it. I mean it might be clove like. I, I have a hard time um, associating the clove spice with beers, but it, it's got that just enough of a yeast character to to be there. Subtle is not the right word. It, it's present, but it's not overpowering. But also lets the uh, the grain and the hop character shine through on the aroma, where I didn't get that in the WB6 WB. 06 one was definitely dominated by the yeast character, where this one is a, a really nice blend of malty, uh, that sort of maybe from the aromatic malt, the Northern Brewer and the Herzbrucker hops are in there. So you get a little bit of that classic noble hop character on the, on the nose. So going in for flavor, I mean, this beer, to me, this is just a wonderful example of what I, I think a Belgian Blonde should be. It's got enough kind of that bready character from the, the grain bill. It's got the yeast character there, but not overpowering. You get enough hops. It's got, both of these have a really nice, I think, balance of bitterness. It does have a malt sweetness. I think those are, that's in line for this recipe. Mouthfeel. I feel like there's a little bit more mouthfeel in this one. 
Uh, and I, you know, I know this one finished higher, uh, Gravity. I think it, it's just a little bit more full. Not, not, it, it's still appropriate, I believe. The carbonation again, same as the other one. Just, I think it's a little low. It's, it's not inappropriate. It's a good drinking beer, but for the style, I think it should be a little higher. The you know, overall impression. So this is incredible beer in my mind. This, this is really what I would like uh, in a kind of a nice, light, flavorful drinking uh, Belgian style beer. I think it'd be a really nice sort of gateway if you're not like, I don't really like the really phenolic or sort of farmhouse kind of character that you can get from some, say, like Saison yeast or some of the warm fermented Abbey Ale yeast. It's got complexity. You know, I, I did a single a, over a year ago, a year and a half ago. I thought it was just a little too plain, a little too clean, it kind of just tasted like maybe a flavorful Pilsner. This one is exactly like what I would look for. I mean, it's still up there in ABV, so it's not a, it's not a session, be, session beer, but it, it's a really nice drinking beer. So you know, my overall you know, question would be, uh, I, I brewed a lot of beers I really liked with WLP 530, which is the West Small strain. I'd be really curious to do another side-by-side -side with uh, the Lollamont Abbey East versus the WOP 530, just to see how those would compare. So be sure to check out this video where I discuss the creation of this recipe. And also check out this playlist for more ideas on building great beer. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button if you learned something or just enjoyed hanging out with me today.